What's up, everybody? Big Sweet C here with you. Got another fantastic podcast for you. This is episode number five of the Another Gamer Dad podcast, starring yours truly, Big Sweet C, here for you. Uh, <clears throat> so, like I was saying before, uh, I'll start off with this. Uh, I do have now, uh, I, well, <laughs> hopefully, knock on wood, we do have now a Spotify account. Uh, you should be able to find me, Big Sweet C, on Spotify. Uh, you can listen to all the audio podcasts if you would like. And um, so you now you can get this here on YouTube if you prefer, uh, or if you just want to listen to it in your downtime on Spotify, if you prefer that, uh, we should be up and running. If not, definitely by the, uh, by the next episode. So uh, be sure to uh, head on over to Spotify, follow your boy Big Sweet C, and um, get your podcast over there if you prefer. Because uh, like I said, the one thing that I don't really like about YouTube is the fact that you have to have the video up. You can't just kind of have it on in the background. So one, it makes it really kind of hard to just kind of listen to while you're doing other activities um, because you have to have the video up. Uh, and it also doesn't allow you to, to listen to this in the background if you're scrolling through like Twitter or something like that. So uh, hopefully putting it on Spotify will give you a better little way to, uh, to listen to the podcast if, uh, if you so choose. But um, <clears throat> today we've got a fantastic episode. We're going to uh, talk about a couple of things uh, in the gaming segment. I want to give you my initial thoughts on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Give you a little hint. They're good. <laughs> uh, when we get into the sports segment, I've got something that I wanted to show you guys last time that I forgot, so I'll show it to you before. And then we get into my favorite uh, outdoor activity, disc golf. And then for the movie segment, uh, Netflix is set to rise their prices. At least they n uh, have announced they're going to rise their prices again. This will be like the fourth time in about a year, year and a half. So I kind of want to talk to you about the state of streaming services. Uh, but first, we're going to get into uh, my, uh, my first little intro here. I have to, and I meant to do this last time, I have to thank a couple of people from my old work uh, at Best Buy in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, first and foremost, Carlos, uh, Carla Mendoza. She's kind of the one that kind of really got me into uh, finally getting this podcast started. So thank you very much for the inspiration. She hosts a fantastic podcast on Spotify called the Vibin' and Surviving Podcast, uh, where they talk about life in L.A. And um, let me tell you, if uh, you don't know anything about L.A. outside of Hollywood, life in L.A. is very different than what they teach you about life in Hollywood. So it's a very interesting podcast. I, uh, I've been on a few episodes. I love being on it. And um, so thank you to her. Uh, thank you to my former boss, Lydia Matthews, who paid for my wife and my son and I's uh, going away dinner. Um, not only that, I have to thank her because she actually got me into Geek Squad. And uh, when I started in Best Buy, when I restarted at Best Buy, because I used to work at Best Buy, when I was going to Michigan State way back in the day, 2006, 2007, somewhere around there. Uh, when I uh, reapplied, <clears throat> I got in as a part-time salesman in the computer PC world. And um, I was trying desperately to get into services because I don't really consider myself a salesman. I'm more of a service man. I'd rather come in and mount your TV than try and sell you one. So... Uh, you know, since 2017, when I restarted at Best Buy, I had been trying to get into Geek Squad. I had applied multiple times, had several interviews, and for whatever reason, was just never picked until I met Lydia Matthews, who took a chance on somebody who didn't really have a whole lot of experience uh, in the Geek Squad world. She brought me along, and um, well, that was a fantastic experience, and so I can't, uh, I can't thank her enough for that. She's actually probably the best boss I've ever had, <laughs> uh, so I want to thank her for that. Along the same lines, like I want to thank everybody, uh, all my friends over at the Geek Squad, um, not just the Geek Squad, but in Best Buy in general. Like, you know, I was mentioning this before when I moved away from LA and then I moved back. A lot of my friends, you know, my so called friends kind of disbanded me. And a lot of it is because Hollywood is, fair, uh, is filled with, uh, with share thought, share think. Um, and what I mean by that is, if you don't believe the exact same thing as everybody else believes, you're kind of looked at as like an outcast or you're kind of looked at as like a, an outsider, conspiracy theorist. Uh, I've been called MAGA, right-wing extremist, uh, <laughs> all sorts of crazy shit that I'm definitely not. So, um, But the, the one people that have 
you know, been more than well, uh, willing to, uh, to welcome me into their lives are the coworkers that I've met at, uh, at Best Buy. Um, <clears throat> I actually, I still shoot. I just won it last year. I won it a couple of, a few years ago, about four years ago when I first started, but <clears throat> I'm still in multiple fantasy football leagues with, uh, with a bunch of the guys that I used to work with. I've won several times <laughs> across the different, different leagues. So the fact that they keep uh, inviting me, even though I keep winning, um, is always a testament to the fact that they're actually they're actual friends, and um, they don't care that I don't buy the uh, you know the propaganda machine narrative. Uh, they actually they find it inspiring. They they like the fact that I give them outside opinions, and, um, and they appreciate that. And so it uh, you know the group group think uh, uh, that is Hollywood does not. Uh, people would rather be in the club than friends with friends. And it's kind of disheartening because, you know, and I'm not going to get into too much of this because uh, it'll just kind of lead into my original idea of the the point for today's show. But, um, you know, it's weird because I've had friends that, like, I haven't just been friends with for years, but I've literally helped monetarily, uh, economically, job-wise. Like, I've literally given them more opportunities than I can even remember. Uh, and yet they still toss me to the curb because, uh, because I told them the truth about Joe Biden, or I told them the truth about, uh, Democrats in general. And, um, that's not, that's not what friends do. That's not, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a friend, you don't let ideals, uh, get in the way, you know, they didn't like the fact that I didn't want to get vaccinated. Um, I, I literally, I had a friend, a couple of them actually that, uh, you know, hey, we should get together when this whole pandemic is over. And I'm like, you know, there's the pandemic is only caused because <laughs> because, because they say it's a pandemic. It's not really a pandemic. Lo and behold, two, three, four years later, we find out that all of it was just a big bullshit, nothing. And um, I was right the whole time. And uh, and so they don't talk to me anymore because uh, because I told them the truth back in the day and they didn't want to hear it. You know, they they want to belong to the club. They don't want to be independent thinkers, but um, I've never had that, never experienced that at uh, at Best Buy. So, again, mad shout out to uh, Carla Mendoza. Check out Vibin' and Surviving. Uh, her co-hosts, uh, Chris Soto, <clears throat> Rodrigo, uh, No No Noel. I hope I pronounced that right. No No. Maybe it's just No No Wall. No No Noel. <laughs> uh, Lisandro, uh, all my dudes. Um, uh, Juan, uh, all my dudes over at, uh, at the, uh, uh, LA based geek squad, uh, home theater installation guys, you guys, you guys are the best. And I, uh, I still think about you guys every day, whenever you're ready. Uh, I'm ready to join you on a phone call for that, uh, for that podcast vibing and surviving. I'm, I'm, uh, still actively watching and listening. <laughs> uh, but you know, we're kind of headed into, uh, into what I wanted to talk about. And uh, that's specifically because uh, this week is special to me. So uh, on the second, it would have been my dad's birthday. He was born in 1948. So he would have been, let's see, uh, 50 would make him 74. Uh, he would have been 76 today. And then on the ninth, today's Thursday, Friday will be the eighth. This should release on Saturday the ninth. The ninth would have been my mom's birthday. She's nine years younger than my dad. So she would have been uh what 60 67 this year um they both passed in 2020 uh apparently not allegedly not because of covid <laughs> no it wasn't because of covid because my dad had mesothelioma um but it was in a very, very advanced stage of mesothelioma he got it when he was in the navy back in the what, early 60s or something like that during the vietnam war and um it, it just kind of had advanced too far for him to uh, to survive it. And what's weird is he goes to, you know, they find out that he has uh, mesothelioma and um, they have this special surgery that they can do now where they literally, they cut you open and they, they take out the lung and wash it down with some chemo stuff and then they put it back in. Allegedly, everything went great, but, uh, you know, of course, we're in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So my dad does the right thing gets the COVID vaccine two months after the getting the COVID vaccine heart stop or as long as stop working <laughs> and, uh, 
and he's just gone. Uh, and the worst part about it was because of the pandemic, we weren't allowed in the hospital to see him. So he had to, he had to pass away on his own in a hospital bed all by himself. And, uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean to laugh, but laughing's all I can do when, uh, when you're hurting. Um, I'll never forgive any of the doctors or any of the politicians that, that put us in lockdown because of a fake disease that's no worse than the flu. Uh, they literally admitted that it's treated like the flu nowadays. Uh, and so it, it, uh, but enough, enough is enough. Uh, so a few months later, my mom passed away. Uh, she had been struggling with breast cancer for the better part of 20 years, 19 years, I think is, uh, 19 years ago, I think is when she, uh, she was originally diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. She went through chemo a few times. Um, apparently she was in remission she was getting better. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe two years before she passed away, uh, they found another, uh, another node or another lump or another whatever <laughs> tumor, uh, whatever they call it. And so for the last, uh, you know, four to six months of her life or something like that, she was living in a hospice cause she was, you know, on the verge of passing away. And, uh, in September of 2020, she finally did. And the truth is, I think she was just tired of fighting, you know, uh, had my dad stuck around and they were still living together in the house. Maybe she could have lasted a little bit longer, but, um, you know, my dad passed, my brother and I were fully grown adults. You know, I mean, this is 2020. I'm graduated from high school in 2000, you know, so I'm 40 years old already. My brother's 38, 39 years old. And so uh, I think she was just ready to move on. And um, and so I, I bring this up because, again, it would have been their birthdays had they uh, had they lived. Uh, neither of them, uh, <laughs> neither of them made it to the average age of expectancy, uh, which is only 73 now, uh, it's down like 10 years from what it used to be. But, um, I, I just want to say happy birthday to them. Uh, I miss them very dearly. And uh, it brings me to my point of, you know, kind of, uh, how do we go through regrets in our life, you know, down moments and how do we move through it? And, uh, I, I don't, consider myself generally a person that uh, has a lot of regrets in life. I mean, I can think of a couple that I could consider regrets uh, that I don't. Um, first and foremost, uh, when I graduated from high school, I, uh, I went to a broadcasting school called Spex Howard School of Broadcast Arts in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, out of that, I got, it wasn't a great paying job, you know, but this is Michigan. And back at the time, the minimum wage, I think, was six twenty-five or something like that. And I'm making ten dollars an hour, so I was making ample, ample money. Uh, I had no debt because I was able to pay off school because of this, and um, <clears throat> you know, life was good. And uh, but it wasn't. It, it didn't. It wasn't what I thought that I wanted to really do. Like I wanted to kind of move up, and so I uh, applied to Michigan State University. I got accepted. I went to Michigan State. I quit my job that I was paying my ten dollar, uh, paying me ten dollars an hour because I couldn't work full time anymore. And um, I went to Michigan State, and I took on a bunch of student loan debt. And uh, you know, and, and and I'm not saying that you know Michigan State wasn't a fun time. Like it was one of the best times in my life. And and I want to say that the education was worthless because even though I don't necessarily use a lot of it now, you know, it doesn't seem to get me any job interviews or anything, having a diploma from Michigan State University. I do have several degrees. <laughs> you know, I've got uh, a degree in English. I've got a degree in creative, uh, creative writing. I've got a degree in uh, film theory, film criticism. <laughs> uh, I've got a minor in acting. I've got a minor in psychology. <laughs> Uh, so like I have, you know, I have all this stuff that generally speaking, um, they encourage you to do because you're supposed to get better paying jobs and, and jobs in industries that you want to, to work in, uh, because you were able to work hard enough and get those, uh, and get that education. And so because I, because they don't really help me out as much as, you know, they originally told me to, I feel like I was lied to, um, uh, and I ended up just, you know, spending most of my extra income trying to pay off these loans that, uh, what they don't tell you, and we'll get into this later as, you know, as people start applying for school and stuff, I want to talk about this, but what they don't tell you about student loans is they tell you, take the loan out now, pay it back when you graduate and you get a job, right? That's not the whole kit and caboodle. And, and, and this is probably more well known now than it was 
when I was uh, applying for student loans. But the truth is when I was applying for student loans, they had just kind of expanded the program and the government was like, give everybody these programs, no kid left behind, all that fucking bullshit that they tell you. Uh, but, uh, you know, when they, when they have you sign on the dotted line, what they don't tell you is they're still adding that interest for the four years, five years, six years, whatever you're at school, um, you're, you're getting that interest applied to your loan. It's just deferred until after the, uh, after you graduate. And so, you know, if I had been smart enough, uh, if I would have known what I was actually doing as these bills are coming in, I wouldn't have just paid the bare minimum, you know, just to keep them. I would have actually started trying to pay off the loan as uh, as the years progress. But, you know, I was told that, hey, don't pay anything now, pay when it's later. Uh, and you get that bill and, and you see that you, you owe zero dollars. Um, it doesn't tell you any of the interest that it's actually being uh, added up. And so I originally took out about $38,000 in loans. But the day after I graduated, it, it that thirty eight thousand went up to more like like sixty, <laughs> and so um, because of all the interest that was accruing uh, during the um, during the time I was at school, so uh, you know, so I, I settled myself with a bunch of debt, moved out to one of the most expensive places to live in in the country in L.A., and uh, you know, I spent the better part of my uh, beginning life in LA trying to pay off my, my student loans. And luckily I was able to finally pay them off. Um, what last year, this year, last year, something like that last year. Yeah. Cause it's, we're barely into this year, but, um, so I was, I was fortunate enough to be able to actually pay them off, but, uh, you know, that, uh, that could be looked at as a regret because I had a well-paying job that, uh, had I stayed at, I probably would have been making 50, $60,000. And in Michigan, that's, you know, that's a lot of money. <laughs> My brother makes uh, roughly 50, 51,000. And um, I mean, he lives like a king, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, uh, you know, you could look at that as a regret. But again, the education that I got uh, allowed me to uh, see the world from different perspectives and gave me a different way of, of calculating information and, and whatnot like that. So I don't look at it as like a regret, uh, but you could. Um, when I first moved out to LA, I got a job with a, uh, I don't want to say it's a great company. And again, I wasn't making a sh shite ton of money. <laughs> uh, I was making enough. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I worked at a company called Craig Murray Productions. It was a, a theatrical and TV spot trailer, uh, trailer house that did Disney movies. Um, and uh, I, I worked my way into it after a couple of years. I was, you know, kind of regarded as one of the uh, up and coming uh, for that company. But uh, I kept getting passed up for uh, promotions and, and, and stuff because, uh, you know, I was so young uh, compared to the rest of them. And they kept giving me the excuse, oh, you're too young. Clients aren't going to take you seriously. Uh, you know, I used to write stuff for them and, and it was too outside the box writing. Nowadays, you see all sorts of crazy shit that I came up with on the Internet. Like trailers on YouTube are different, totally different than trailers that you see on, uh, on TV. And um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take credit for inventing that kind of stuff, but I mean, I was way ahead of the curve when it came to it. Cause I was doing those types of commercials way ahead of time, uh, you know, before YouTube was like as big as YouTube is. And so, you know, had they, I, I just felt slighted, you know? And so I left the company because I didn't think there was any way that I was ever going to get an actual promotion and they were just going to kind of keep me in a position they liked having me in. And so I moved on to, uh, um, I moved on to to try and find bigger and better things, which unfortunately just never came. So again, you could look at this, you could look at that as a regret. Uh, but again, I try not to because I was attempting to better myself. But had I stayed at CMP, I'd probably be making ninety to a hundred thousand dollars a year right now as a producer of of uh, at online content. <laughs> and um, and so you know how how do you how do you move through life? knowing you, you had these opportunities and you squandered them, you know, and, and that's kind of what I want to talk about a little bit because it's not, uh, it, it, in my opinion, that's not what you should focus on. Uh, you know, it, it's good to remember this stuff. That way you learn from your past mistakes. You know, you, you fit into somewhere, uh, an employer that you like. Um, maybe it's not exactly what you wanted, uh, but you realize the benefits of having that job are, and maybe I don't leave the next CMP if I ever get a chance to, to do that again. Uh, you know, uh, um, 
I haven't gone back to grad school, which is something I've kind of kicked around a lot because a lot of my friends have. Um, but again, if, uh, you know, if my bachelor's degree <laughs> and, and five other degrees that I have isn't enough, uh, what's, uh, what's a master's really going to do for me? And so, you know, I'm not putting myself in those similar situations. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you don't really want to look at them as a regret. You want to look at them as more of a learning experience. And that's, that's kind of how I view it. And so, um, you know, on, the, on this day and this week, um, really what makes me think of regrets in my parents is they're never going to get to meet my son, Christopher. They're not, never going to get to meet any future children that I might have. You know, I was fortunate enough to get married before my mom passed. Uh, and she got to see me get married, uh, but she'll never get to see my brother get married if he ever does. Um, my dad never got to see me get married. Luckily enough, I had been dating my wife for, for long enough that, uh, you know, he at least he got to meet my wife uh, while we were still dating. And, um, and so he knows who I married. Uh, and, uh, you know, depending on your, your faith and, and your belief system, uh, maybe they are watching down from me somewhere. <laughs> and, um, uh, they do get to see me live my life every day now. And, um, but it, it is, it is something that I struggle with, uh, because I love my son more than anything on earth. And I would literally burn down villages <laughs> and cities, uh, if that's what he wanted. And, um, and they're never going to get to, they're never going to get to meet the wonderful, absolutely adorable child that he is. And I have to live with that. Uh, and you know, my wife and I, if you think about it back on it now, I mean, we dated forever and, uh, honestly, we probably kind of gotten married, uh, way earlier years before we actually did. And, um, they would have had a chance to, to meet, you know, uh, Christopher and, and any other children that I might've had. And, and so it's something that I kind of have to live with. And, you know, this week specifically really kind of makes me think of that, uh, because I do miss them dearly. And, uh, I, I wasn't, super in touch with them or anything but um i i know whenever i wanted i could pick up the phone and, and call them and um and we would just pretend like it hadn't been two years since we talked you know and uh we would just i'd pick up a phone with my dad and you know we would just go on i can't believe the lions look at how awesome they're doing you know like like again like we haven't not been speaking for two years like i haven't left california for five years and been back to michigan to see them and so uh, it, it's one of those weeks that <clears throat> makes me believe, uh, makes me interested in the idea of, you know, how, how regret can be useful going forward. And, um, anybody that, uh, struggles with those kind of thoughts, like I do at times, uh, I, I want you to know that you're not alone, you know, like it, it's something that everybody goes through. I'm 42 years old and I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. Every, every <laughs> March 2nd through March 9th. Uh, I'll be reminding myself that, uh, you know, my wife and I could have gotten married five years earlier and both my parents would have met all my children and, um, they would have gotten to be part of their lives. My wife kind of goes through the same thing. Her mom passed away before Christopher was born. Uh, but at least she was, you know, pregnant during, uh, before she passed. And so she knew he was on the way and, um, but, uh, but don't, don't use this as a time to fall into a state of depression, you know, use this as a time to remind yourself that, uh, you know, there's, there's different ways of handling the future, right? There's, there's always a positive from a negative and, uh, every failure is a learning lesson. It's not, it's not necessarily a failure. It's, it's not necessarily a mistake, not th something that you should, you know, look back on and go, I really fucked my life up right then. It's a, it's a learning experience and it, it's going to make you grow. It's going to get you uh, into a better state of mind when you come into those situations in the future. And, um, I just want you guys to know that, uh, again, you're not, you're not the only ones kind of thinking about these things and, and wondering what could have been. Cause, well, I mean, you can wonder all you want, all you're going to do is drive yourself crazy because there's no way you're going to know what would have happened. And, um, and so stick in there and, and, uh, don't, uh, don't fret. <laughs> we, uh, we all have, moments in our life that we think back on and um we don't want to dwell on those facts you know we want to use those as learning experiences to build positive futures for ourselves and and that's kind of what I want to tell you guys uh that's what I want that's the kind of life I want my son to live you know like I I don't want him to think that 
a, a failure here or a, a loss in sports there or a bad grade in this class there is the end all be all because it's not. There's plenty of life left to live and um, you should look forward to it. As we get into our first commercial break, take a little sippy sip with a coffee. We'll get into a little brighter notes as we go forward. <laughs> Again, any uh, any coffee manufacturers, any small independent coffee manufacturers that want to sponsor the channel, please, by all means. Uh, I think I'm drinking Starbucks Nespresso today. Um, we have a Nespresso maker that, to be honest with you, I'm not super impressed with Nespresso makers or Keurigs. Uh, they're quick, they're easy, and it's nice, but uh, it's not real coffee to me. <laughs> I'd much rather go to... Dunkin' Donuts and and get something you know freshly brewed or uh, you know it, back in uh, back in Los Angeles, uh, I wish I could remember the name of uh, the coffee company that uh, that I did a commercial for. Uh, I can't. You would think I would remember it. I can remember Boba Tea, Bubble Island <laughs> from you know from my days back in Spex Hours School of Broadcast Arts in Michigan, uh, but I can't for the life of me. Oh, Handsome Man Coffee. Uh, I, I remember the logo because it's a you know it's a blank face with that that crazy like pirate stash handsome handsome man coffee handsome or maybe it's just handsome coffee something something to that effect. Uh, but if they wanted to sponsor the show, by all means, uh, I will. I'll promote your stuff. I'll drink your coffee. I I did enjoy it a lot. It was it was good. <laughs> all right. But moving on, we're talking about our gaming segment. I want to get into something a little bit more lighthearted. We've finally gotten to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It dropped on, uh, what was it, the 29th of February. So we've, uh, we've done three streams of it already. Uh, by the time this releases, we'll have done five streams. Uh, and then there'll be another one uh, tonight, the, the 9th, Saturday. And so if you guys uh, want to check it out, please, by all means, come by, check it out. The game has been... I want to say pretty much what I expected because I do expect it to be the best game of the year. But I mean, it's it's been even more fun than I can I can even imagine. Like it, it's uh, the gameplay is phenomenal. I was kind of expecting them to maybe make a tweak here or there uh, in terms of uh, you know the, like the synergy abilities, which I'm still kind of getting used to how they work and when I can use them, when I can't, and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, they've they've streamlined it and they've tweaked it to to make it just that much better you know so if you liked the gameplay in in remake you'll definitely like the game uh, the gameplay in in rebirth because it's been phenomenal it is it is so smooth and i now i play on whatever you know standard mode is or whatever i know they have the performance mode and then they have the uh like the story mode and all that stuff depending on what you want your graphics to perform at um whatever the default was is what we're playing on uh but whatever it is has been phenomenal like i there's no uh hesitation between going from just walking around the main world into a boss uh, or a boss fight into a fight you know like the way that you you get your first strikes is you you actually you sneak up on them and it, it reminds me of like a better version of earthbound where you know depending on how you attacked or how you came into contact with enemies you got your first strike ability or they got their first strike or you just had the normal attack and like it's so easy to get first strike abilities because you can sneak up on enemies and stuff now and they have like a little warning when they're telling you that they can see you and stuff like that it, it's it's absolutely phenomenal uh it's so smooth in terms of like open worldness to actual fighting and everything like it, it's it's the best i've ever seen in that case you know there's always some sort of hiccup usually in those types of games where um uh, you know maybe uh maybe something on the outside gets in the way or you know you can't uh, can't jump over this or you can't walk over this rock or whatever but it, it doesn't have that problem in 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 this and to be able to go like it, you just switch you know characters so smoothly and like even if you're in the middle of using one character you switch to to controlling another they the, the character that you leave from has no hesitation and just goes into its automatic move set and um the other thing that i like about it is <laughs> now whether or not they actually do any damage or not uh but instead of splitting the group up like if you remember from the original 
once you leave Midgar, they say, oh, the group's too big. We're going to get spotted easily. So let's split into two groups. And then you choose the three people that you want to play with. And the other people go uh, kind of on their own and you don't really get to see them. Um, but in this one, you all run together as a group. And so you see Barrett shooting at the enemies that you're fighting. You see Red 13 or Tifa or Aerith, whichever character you're not using at the time, they're in the background fighting along with you. And, and like I said, whether or not they are actually doing damage, I don't think they are. Um, it at least looks like they're interacting with the enemies and uh, it, it gives it that much more detail to put you into a more realistic situation because that's exactly how it would be if this was real life. And so that little minute detail you know, gives it oomph, gives it legitimacy and, uh, and, and makes it better than a regular video game, you know? Um, this, again, the synergy abilities add a new dimension because it's not, it's not like Remake, which is what I thought they were going to do, where you tell Sonon when you're playing with Yuffie, you tell Sonon, hey, we're going to synergize. And all of a sudden he stops being his individual character and you only do the synergized attacks going forward. No, this is these are added dimensions. You still have Aerith and Tifa, or whoever your teammates are, Red 13, Barrett. They're still doing their individual thing. And when you're allowed to, when you have reached a certain uh, you know, threshold, boom, then you can team up and you do these synergy moves. So you're still, there's no downside to it. You know, there's no... Um, your partner's waiting for you to do something because you haven't decided what synergy attack you want to do yet. Like it's very fluid and, and uh, another added dimension to a game that was already <laughs> filled with layers uh, in terms of gameplay. Um, the quick buttons where you, you know, you're, you're blocking and then you can do a synergy attack uh, that doesn't use any ATB whatsoever. So you, you're always on the go, you know, it makes it much more upbeat. It, almost eliminates what we what we know as like the ATB gauge and stuff like that because you can always do something at all times and um it, it really eliminates that lull of kind of having to wait before you can uh you can do an ability or or cast a spell and stuff like that and so it's just it, it's just such a, a and I know I keep using this word, but just like uh, this word, but it's just so streamlined and smooth and and precise. You know, like it it hasn't. We haven't seen a game like this when it comes to gameplay, and um, they're they're really going to push, uh, you know, action adventure games forward with this. And uh, and Square has really kind of perfected this open world action adventure uh, time battle gauge, and um, it, it's. It's easily, I don't want, well, it's not easily the best I've ever seen. I mean, we just played uh, Tears of the Kingdom was, was a fantastic open world action RPG. Uh, but, it, but it's different because that's not a time-based game, right? That's just an open world action JRPG. And, uh, and so to have this uh, where you have these different abilities that you can slow down time so you have a chance to look through all your different menus and everything, uh, switch between characters and stuff like that, uh, it, it's so much smoother, so much more streamlined, so much more precise now that it, it really takes gameplay to the next level. And um, I mean, we're talking, we're talking like on the verge of like, uh, like MMORPG better, uh, better than MMORPGs. We're talking about better than like first person shooter type of stuff, you know, like, I mean, we're talking speed of destiny Two type uh, first person shooter with an action RPG where you have different menus to go through to do different abilities and stuff like that and it, it's just amazing what they've been able to accomplish uh with this game um along the same lines the story is great you know like it, it's we're just barely into the uh into the game but we've had so much more story already uh the the mithril mine it, it looks you know like i if i remember correctly i think it was just called the mithril cave uh originally um, but in this one, it's a mithril mine, and it's like a legitimate mine. You're pushing mine carts and stuff to to uh, create ways to get up and down areas and whatnot. You're shooting at uh, athro actual, you know, uh, mithril and whatnot to to find um, stuff that you can create with, which is another thing that I love about the game. You have items that you can then create. You can transmute items, which is what I had called. Uh, back back in the day, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of um, episodes ago, when I was talking about what I think is going to be possible in this game, 
and now you can create armor. You can create um, key items that then help you with side quests and stuff like that. The side quests are fantastic. We met we met a guy in Calm named Broden who adds another dimension to the story. He's a former now it, it doesn't specifically say soldier, but he's definitely had some sort of like soldier procedure right he's a former shinra uh military man who's had some exposure to mako because he's got the voices in his head but he's not a mindless zombie like the reunion members that we see uh, and who are the only former shinra members that we come across you know he's been able to live a regular life and now you know as the degradation occurs now he's starting to hear the voices and he's starting to feel sick and you know, he's not feeling like himself, but, you know, it adds another dimension that not everybody has gone through and become these mindless zombies. It's not just Cloud. You know, there have been multiple others that have gone through this procedure and um, have been able to live successful lives afterwards. And so it gives it a new dimension to the story overall. Uh, I, I thought it was great. You know, he shows resistance <laughs> and, uh, and, and it, it gives a reason why these people are not turning in cloud and 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 everybody else because you know like one of the and, and you don't really think about it you know i was what it came out in 97 so i was what 15 when the original came out 15 or 16 something like that and so you don't really think about it but i mean you're going into calm and calm has been occupied by shinra for you know, since at least the original uh, war with Junon, right? And and so, why aren't these people calling Shinra over to to let them know that these people that are wanted by Shinra are here in their town now? You know, and and so you have a reason now to believe that these people don't want to turn these fugitives in. You know, because you have people like Broden who went through whatever it is that Shinra put them through, and they realize that that's not right and someone has to fight back and they can't do it but they see these people that can and they actually they help them out because of it and so again you're adding depth you're adding layers you're adding personal character experiences to a story that was already great but at the same time mostly confusing <laughs> you know and so you you add this depth to the story now that really fleshes out what's going on and who these people are and and adding depth to the world around shinra and the story and it, it's just it's just absolutely beautiful uh and, and that and i haven't even touched on like the side quest yet queen's blood which is clearly a knockoff of i think it's called triple triad or something in um in final fantasy 8 uh they had it in uh, in 9 as well like the little card game queen's blood the card game is phenomenal you know like it's so there's so much detail to it but at the same time it's kind of fairly easy to learn you know it's one of those games that are are and what makes board games great is they can be very easy to learn but very difficult to master and so it, it you know it takes time not to just like show you how to play the game but for you to learn how to get good at it and uh and so it gives you a reason to play these games and not only just play them because you want to play them or you want to get the trophy or whatever, because they're actually fun to play, you know, like they're fun to figure out. Uh, it, it's one of those things where like, as a competitive person, at least, you know, if I'm playing somebody in chess and they beat me every single time, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to, yeah, I might get frustrated, but I'm, I'm going to intently learn how to play the game in different ways to get better, to hopefully beat said person that's beating me all the time. It gives me a reason to have fun while being competitive. Uh, the, uh, the way that they've revamped Fort Condor, which used to just be, you know, like a standard board game, so to speak. Uh, from the remake, the intermission DLC. Now they found a way to like put your characters in the game as heroes. And so they've eliminated the magic spells, it looks like, and they've given you the heroes and it adds another dimension to it. You know, it gives you a personable reason to play this game. And um, it, it's just been, it's been absolutely phenomenal. The mini games that Square has put out throughout the years have been very good. Uh, some of them not as good. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm not talking. <laughs> you know, Blitzball is still probably my favorite. Like Blitzball, 
I wish was a standalone game. Uh, but, uh, you know, Queen's Blood could be a mobile game and, and people would, would get into it for sure. Absolutely. Uh, the way they've done for Condor, like they've, they've always kind of knocked the mini games out of the park and they only, they only seem to get better and more creative. Uh, and, uh, and so like my, my first experiences with this were about 20 hours in, uh, maybe not that much, maybe 15, 16 hours, something like that. But it, I mean, I, I, I couldn't have expected more. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, I, I seriously, I, I think this is going to be the game of the year. Uh, having played it for, you know, the few hours that I have played it still makes me think that this is going to be the game of the year. Uh, but it has somehow exceeded those expectations in terms of gameplay and story and mini games and, and what you've gotten out of this product. You know, I, I enjoyed Remake, but this is somehow better than Remake, even though remake was is is clearly you know the baseline of it and um it's only it's only gotten better uh the graphics are amazing but they should be amazing because you're going from ps4 to ps5 uh but it, it's and i i don't know how they could have done you know oh this is going to be the greatest game of the year and still somehow exceeded the expectations that i had for this game it's been absolutely phenomenal and i highly recommend it for anybody uh, I haven't checked, uh, so I don't know if it's still available now, but before, if you pre-ordered it, it gave you both games. So I had mentioned this a couple of streams ago, or a couple of uh, um, podcasts ago. If you haven't gotten into it, you didn't get into Remake, get into it now, you know? If you can still get the two-for-one deal, get into it now, because this is... I, 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 I have very little doubt in my mind. <laughs> and the only reason I have any doubt is because I thought for sure that Tears of the Kingdom was going to be game of the year last year. And, um, well, you get into the politics of things uh, and, uh, you know, a game comes out and they have uh, different pronouns and stuff. And so now we're not just talking about strictly the game. We're talking about, you know, inclusivity and all this other fucking woke bullshit that ruins everything. Um, but uh, so, you know, I mean, there's a chance that, uh, you know, some game comes out and that uh, that has all that and they they have to give that game of the year because you know the alphabet community will fucking piss and moan and bitch and whine if it if it doesn't so um but in my opinion i still think this is the game to beat and um it's it's going to be hard to for anything after this to to live up to the standard that that rebirth has put out there uh so far um it's been phenomenal As we go into commercial break number two, still drinking my cough, F.A. Uh, again, I haven't gotten my next shipment of uh, Field of Greens, uh, but uh, Field of Greens, fantastic, makes me feel good. Uh, better Health um, is something that I've been looking in to try. They have this Better Lungs thing. Uh, I've been uh, having trouble breathing at night for whatever reason. I, uh, I, I think I have what's called uh, chronic bronchitis. That's when you, you create too much mucus and it, it seeps into your lungs and it restricts your, your ability to breathe properly. And uh, Better Health, Better Lungs is uh, supposed to help you with that kind of stuff. So maybe we'll try that. But, you know, I think a lot of it is just because <laughs> I haven't, haven't gotten my new, uh, my new Field of Greens um, shipment uh, yet. And so... You know, it's starting to, because uh, it did make me feel a lot better when I was taking that stuff. So, uh, feel the greens. If you want to sponsor the channel, please, by all means. <laughs> Take one more drink before we get started. All right. So now we, uh, we're going to move into our sports segment. Before we get into the actual segment today, uh, another thing that I forgot to do in the last podcast is I was able to get, ah, bam, look at that. Look at that 2023 champion. I was able to get my fantasy football from the Straight Out of Sin City podcast, Fantasy League. I was able to get my ring, and uh, I got it specifically built this size. So I have room for uh, one two, three more, and four more on this side. So uh, I plan on winning this year after year after year. But, I mean, look at the size of this thing. Like, this is this is 
the greatest thing I've ever won from any fantasy league that I've ever won. And uh, I, I love this thing, and it makes me want to win another one because I want another one. <laughs> I want another one bad. And, uh, I mean, it's got weight to it. Like, it is not, <laughs> it is not a cheap product. Uh, it, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it says, I don't know if you can see it on the side, but it says Fantasy Champion on the side. 2023, you've got the, uh, you know, the Lombardi Trophy. Uh, I don't know if they're like diamonds or just whatever the fake stuff is, but um, on the side of the ring here, you've got uh, league champion. On the other side, you've got 2023 champion. I mean, this thing, it, it's it's got weight to it. <laughs> and this this is actually the coolest thing I've ever won. And um, again, it makes me want to keep winning. Uh, and so thank you to uh, to the fantasy, uh, to the Straight Outta Sin City Fantasy Podcast um alex it's lit he's the uh he's the one that um was able to find that that ring and order it for us uh um i'm a butcher her name i think it's <laughs> i think it's maggie <laughs> madeline maybe madeline uh she came in second place she was the runner up so uh you know congrats to you uh but again that league i had to go through uh the number one seed <laughs> uh or the the winner of uh the one division was my first round uh matchup uh and then i had to go through the defending champion to get into the final uh and uh, and so it was not an easy road it never is fantasy football is uh it's a lot of fun during the regular season and it becomes incredibly intense during the playoffs so uh it's always fun to win and um when you can get something when you can get something like this bad boy uh it makes it even more fun. So <laughs> can't wait, uh, can't wait until next season. But um, enough about that. Uh, let's get into what I really want to talk about. It is first week of March, uh, meaning it's pretty close to uh, spring, and then we're going to get into summer. And so it's, uh, you know, I live out uh, in the southern west coast of, uh, of America, so it's usually pretty warm all year round here. But we're getting into spring and summertime when it's warm for everybody, and uh, I want to uh, I want to bring up my favorite outdoor activity. Um, since I'm you know I can't be a professional athlete, <laughs> I love to play disc golf, and uh, I've talked to you guys about this several times before. I've I've put out some shorts with it and whatnot. Uh, but disc golf is essentially it's golf, but instead of clubs and and, and tiny holes and tiny balls, uh, it's. Uh, it's golf with a disc, uh, uh, like a frisbee disc, and you throw the frisbee disc at uh, what's called a basket. Uh, basket's usually about two, three feet off the ground, and um, it's super fun. Uh, what what makes it one of my favorite outdoor activities is is not only is it fun, it's athletic. You know, it, it's it's athletic. So you're you're outside getting some not only fresh air but some exercise in, uh, but it, it's very chill as well you know like the the people that generally play disc golf are uh, you know kind of generally associated uh with the same people that you would consider hippies <laughs> stoners hippies um very laid back uh clientele if you will and so you know you go out there and you make a ridiculous throw uh people may chuckle at it but they'll be like oh hey hey just you know go again <laughs> <laughs> Give it another try. Oh, been there, done that. You know, it's not one of those things where um, people berate you because of uh, how you play. And I and I play with all sorts of uh, very talented players, not so talented players. You know, my uh, my wife likes to go out with it because it's very relaxing. You know, um, and I've been playing a lot longer than my wife. And so, if you were to look at it, it wouldn't seem like it was fair that we were playing with each other. But, uh, you know, it's it, it's it's easy to go out there and, uh, you know, in some cases smoke a joint. Other cases, you can have a nice conversation because it's not one of those things where everybody's got to everybody's got to be quiet because Tiger Woods is on the fifth green. He's got to make a giant drive. and It's bullshit. You know, you don't have the golf clap and everything like that. You hear people go, oh, that's it right there. You hear people yelling and hooting and hollering and having a good time, and they're out there drinking beers and smoking joints, and uh, you know they've got music blaring and stuff. They're they're carrying their little Bluetooth speakers out with them, and everybody's got these cool little backpacks that got fifteen different types of discs and stuff like that. And so it, it's a it's a very chill, fun atmosphere to be around. And um, 
Now, I uh, I played several courses. Uh, there was one course up in San Francisco that my brother and I played when we were up there for uh, one of the California Extremes one year. That was pretty fun. Uh, there's three or four that I've played in the LA area uh, that are pretty fun. One is just outside of Dodger Stadium. It's pretty much it's kind of it's kind of interesting because it's like on this like little cliff. <laughs> You're like on a cliff side, so at any given moment, you know, a bad throw and that disc is way way off course. <laughs> um, there's been some in uh, in Ann Arbor that are uh, in, in the Michigan area that are completely surrounded by by trees and and completely engulfed in a, in a forest and stuff so there's there's all sorts of cool different ones um there's some that i've seen where you have to like throw it through uh like there'll be just a, a giant tree branch right and then like a little tiny hole in the middle of those tree branches that you got to shoot it through and uh some of them are uh you know like uh in the middle of the greens right in the middle of like a giant lake and stuff like that or over a huge ravine uh, and so all sorts of different, like very creative types of courses and stuff. And, um, it, it's just a, it's just a very fun time, uh, to go out there. Uh, and so again, it's very relaxing yet competitive at the same time. Cause you know, you can go out there and you can always try and do better. You know, you can always find different ways to throw discs. There's a bunch of different ways. Like I prefer, you know, what we call the backhand, you know, so I've, I've got my hand and I throw it out like so, but I see a lot of people do the forehand where they're, you know, they're kind of throwing it outwards. Or you can do the tomahawk where you're like over and under. Uh, I've seen people do this weird like kind of throw down so it kind of like spins up and over and and all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, it's a very fun time. And uh, I highly encourage anybody that's looking to do more outdoor activities. I can't wait for the summer to take my son. Uh, he can finally walk around now so we can take him out. Before, you know, we would have uh, had to take in. <laughs> uh, he was just a little too young to go out into that type of environment because we would have had to bring all this other stuff with us, uh, specifically his uh, his stroller and everything. But now now that he can walk around and, and he's got energy to, to actually make it <laughs> nine to 10 to 18 holes, uh, we can finally take him out and start showing him how to throw these discs and everything. And I, I'm super excited to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, if you happen to be in the LA area or, uh, or in the, you know, in Michigan, uh, some of my favorite courses are there. My, my personal favorite is Hahamonga Park in uh, in LA. It's specifically Pasadena, California. It's just outside the Jet Propulsion Laboratory where the NASA Nazis <laughs> create all of our rocket ships. Um, but uh, it was the first ever professional disc golf uh, course. It's still the the first course of the year and the last course of the year for the Professional Disc Golf Association. Um, it's a very fun course. It's very challenging. And throughout the year, because they, it, you know, it's in the middle of a very, uh, very famous park uh, where they have all sorts of like summer camps and stuff like that, uh, the course changes throughout the years. So uh, sometimes you'll, you'll, you know, be going one way. Uh, other times they'll have you go up and over because they've got a camp going. And so the course is always changing. The holes are always changing and it always gives you a, a, a variety of of, uh, of ways to play the game and, uh, which is probably what I like about it the most is going out there and, uh, you know, having those different experiences, even though you're very familiar with the course. Um, another one is actually, uh, the first course that I ever played at the Michigan state campus. Uh, when I was going to Michigan state, I had never heard of disc golf before, but I had a couple of friends that did it and, um, they took me to the MSU course. Uh, what I love about the MSU course is it's, gigantic so most places you go to it's usually par three on every hole they're roughly 250 and maybe 300 feet wide well not at michigan state at michigan state it's super open and super wide and and super long these are 400 500 foot holes uh they're par four par fives and that uh, that really suits me because i've got a super long drive and i'm not that great <laughs> at uh, at the short game so uh, you know, the, the thing I like about the Michigan state course is it really suits my strong, uh, you know, my strongest abilities. And that's, that's to be able to, to throw this disc 350 feet in the air. And so, um, it's a lot of fun to play that one. Uh, and then if you're in the Ann Arbor area, uh, my third one that I will bring up is the Mary Beth Doyle, uh, course in Ann Arbor. Uh, the reason I love this one is it's a very simple course. You know, there's, 
uh, a good mix of open area, good mix of trees and forest area, a good mix of uh, backhand working better, others where forehand works better. And so you get a very good variety on a course that's not very difficult to, uh, to play at. Um, it's also the most common one that my brother and I play at when we play together. Uh, and so it's got a lot of, you know, sentimental value to me as well. So th those three courses, I think, are, uh, are, are my favorite to play. Um, although I love playing all sorts of different ones. And like I said, I've been to maybe a dozen different courses. There's one here in Vegas that, uh, you know, it's fun. It, it's not great, uh, but it's fun to be out there. Um, it, uh, the biggest problem I have with the course here in LA is there's literally almost no shade <laughs> whatsoever. So, you know, you're, you're out there on a day when it's 105, 106, 107 degrees outside and you're out in the beating sun for two, three hours. Uh, it, uh, it gets to you at the end and kind of wears you out. And so, uh, that, that'd probably be my biggest, uh, biggest downfall for that one for me. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's not a super difficult course. They do have some longer uh, holes. They do have some shorter holes, uh, some trickier holes, some easier holes. So it's a good kind of combination of everything. But it it's also kind of in the middle of this park. So there's a lot of like downtime because you're waiting for families to walk from the picnic area to the parking lot. Or, um, you know, you've got people playing basketball uh, around some of the holes. You've got people playing uh, baseball around some of the holes. And so it, it kind of... It, uh, you know, it, I don't want to say it interrupts the game, but um, it, it's harder to get into a flow at that course uh, because there is a lot of interruptions, if you will. And so uh, a couple of downsides to it, uh, but it, it's, you know, I'm sure there's got to be a couple others uh, in the area that I just haven't found uh, that uh, I look forward to uh, trying to figure out and, uh, and playing. But uh, again, if you're looking for a fantastic, fantastic outdoor activity, um, that you can bring your kids with you or your buddies and you just kind of want to get out for a little while and have a conversation, uh, relax while still doing something um, athletic. <laughs> Disc golf is, in my opinion, like the perfect activity uh, to do so. Uh, and I highly, highly, highly encourage it. For our third commercial break, I know I've said this before, <laughs> but at some point we will definitely get the, uh, it used to be called Teespring. I know, and now I think it's just called spring, but, um, I do have, uh, I, I do want to get the t-shirts and the sweatshirts and stuff going again. I want to see what new stuff they have. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about hats. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping, I think they do have that now. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, I want to get that up and going again. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to support the channel uh, by buying some merch, I, I highly <laughs> encourage you to do so. Um, there is a link down in the description box below that maybe works. <laughs> uh, but I got an email from them a few days ago saying that I might have to relist some stuff. So um, uh, I will absolutely get on that and uh, we'll get uh, we'll get those shirts. We'll get those sweats, uh, those hoodies. Because everybody needs a good hoodie, and um, and if I if I can get them, I'll get the I'll get the hats going as well. So you guys can get some big sweet C. Uh, I got to get some another gamer dad merch out there as well uh, to uh, to promote the channel. So uh, be on the lookout uh, for for that. Okay, so moving on to our final segment of the day is our movie segment, our film segment, our cinema theek. Cinema theek, I think is uh, cinema tech, however you want to pronounce it, our cinema segment. Um, and it's more so, I mean, yeah, you can get movies on there and TV shows and stuff like that, but I, I want to focus specifically, Netflix has announced that they're going to raise their prices again. Uh, now, if you haven't been aware <laughs> or if you've been pirating stuff for uh you know for the better part of the last uh, couple of years netflix has risen their prices uh at least three times that i can think of in the last year to year and a half uh so this should be four within you know at most a two-year period which is outrageous to me 
Because if you if you could imagine, you know, paying for your cell phone bill <laughs> and and Verizon's like, oh, it's going to be fifty dollars uh, this month, and then next year or next month it's going to be sixty, and then it's going to be seventy, and then it's going to be eighty. You know, it's just going to keep going up every month. No one would ever fucking buy a cell phone, right? They would never. Why would you do that? And so, uh, Netflix is clearly just being greedy as fuck, uh, and they're a bunch of dickheads about it because there there's really nothing new or original for the american audiences on netflix that's worth paying any additional money for uh they've already done this crackdown on password sharing uh and so how how fucking greedy can you actually be uh before people start uh leaving your service and um you know my my wife is finally you know pretty close to being on board with uh with dropping netflix uh, which I've been talking about. <laughs> I mean, they haven't put anything good out since the second season of Stranger Things, and I mean, even that wasn't wasn't worth twenty dollars a month, which is I think what we pay now. It might be twenty two or twenty three dollars a month. Um, <clears throat> if they raise it again, we're looking at twenty five, twenty six dollars a month, and uh, I mean, at that point you might as well just go back to TV, <laughs> you know, cause you can get the basic cable channels for YouTube TV, I think is $65. So you're at already, you're at half price, uh, for YouTube TV. And, um, I mean, you get a much wider variance on YouTube TV and there's a lot more stuff that I would watch on YouTube TV than there, there would be on Netflix. Because like I said, everything you want to watch is not on Netflix. I used to work for a Netflix TV show, The Ranch. I've never seen it. <laughs> I mean, I've seen all of season one because I had to watch the episodes before they were aired just to make sure that they were correct. But uh, I've never seen, I've never even opened <laughs> the show on Netflix. Um, now, having said that, my uh, my son loves Coco Melon, uh, watches it. We We give him a couple hours every day to watch it. Uh, absolutely loves that TV show. Now I know it's over on YouTube, uh, but the problem with it over on YouTube is it has commercials. And so like, if, you know, if we're trying to do something while he's watching, uh, Coco Melon, um, he's going to immediately get turned off when the commercials kick on. And, uh, and, and so <laughs> we ha constantly have to keep going back and skipping the commercials and everything. Whereas we just throw it on Netflix and because there's no commercials on Netflix, we can just, uh, we just let him kind of be for a little while while we can get our, our whatever it is we're trying to get done, done. Um, and my wife, my wife loves Korean dramas, Korean comedies. She loves Indian movies. Uh, we're talking actual India, Bollywood. <laughs> and uh, it does have quite the collection of that. Now, if you were Korean or Japanese, uh, they seem to have new stuff for you guys every fucking day. <laughs> Another another new series is coming out or another new movie or whatever seems to be coming out. So if you're, you know, if you're in Korea, if you're in Japan, uh, I would say Netflix is probably definitely worth it. Um, for my wife, it's definitely worth it because she's always finding something new to watch. But in my case, I don't typically watch those shows. And if it wasn't for my wife, I would never watch those shows. So, um, it, it just doesn't, it, it's just not, it's just not worth the money anymore. Uh, you know, and the new content that they do put out, like Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I need to tell you guys how bad it was uh, because everybody and their mom saw how fucking bad that show was. And, uh, um, and, and it got renewed for seasons two and three because all of five people watched it. <laughs> and so... Uh, and so they, you know, they put out garbage and then they charge you an arm and a leg for it. Um, you know, another reason they, uh, you know, they were one of the first to jump on this AI script writing bandwagon, which is also trash, uh, because why, why are you raising your price if you're not paying anybody to create your content for you? Um, it, it's, it's a hundred percent greed, you know, that's all it is. It's just, it's just greed <laughs> and that that shouldn't be rewarded you know there was a fantastic movie named wall street uh with um uh charlie sheen and um michael douglas michael douglas has this you know greed is good he was the bad guy in the movie <laughs> you know like he goes to prison because he was committing fraud <laughs> and so 
uh, you know, now greed seems to be the, you know, the, the profit motive of the day. Uh, we've got inflation out the ass here in America. Uh, and most of it is because corporations are greedy and we don't have an administration that has any balls to stop it. Uh, matter of fact, we've got an administration that's filled with people who were bought and paid for by these corporations that are uber greedy now and just getting away with charging you whatever you want because there's nowhere else to go because we're filled with monopolies, uh, which <laughs> we're totally against the, you know, totally against the, the principle of a free market society. Uh, a free market society cannot have monopolies <laughs> like they're they're antithesis they are polar opposites of each other um but we don't live in a free market society we live in an oligarchy that's uh, you know run by a bunch of fucking uh economic dictators and uh, they've bought off all our politicians um our president is easily the most corrupt politician of all time uh, and so, you know, so Netflix and, and other corporations uh, can get away with price gouging people on a regular basis and charging them more uh, while offering them nothing else in return. And uh, and so it, it's it's crazy that people are willing to put up with it. And, um, you know, I have to call myself crazy because right now my my wife and I put up with it. And, uh, you know, again, in, in her case. Maybe it's not as bad for her because she does watch so much more content on Netflix than I do. Uh, but my, you know, my favorite streaming option actually is um, is Max. I I think uh, I, I thought HBO Max was great when it came out as like a little side companion for uh, for anybody who bought uh, paid for the uh, the HBO package. But uh, once. You know, once WB and don't get me wrong, WB is another trash ass company that uh, that shouldn't be rewarded with anything. But uh, the truth is, when WB merged HBO and and Discovery onto Max, uh, and then they they opened up the Warner Brother Movie Library to Max, um, it's been really worth it. Uh, I mean, it's only ten dollars, I think, a month, <laughs> maybe twelve or something like that. But it's it's definitely less than thirteen bucks. Uh, and, uh, uh, you can go back and watch all of the HBO original shows. I'm talking the Sopranos, Oz, the wire, which is in my opinion, and I've said this multiple times, the wire is the greatest show of all time. Um, they've got uh, game of Thrones on there, which my wife and I have gone back and, and been rewatching lately. Uh, now say what you will about the last season of it. I know it wasn't very good, but the first seven seasons of it is phenomenal storytelling. Uh, and so it has content not just worth watching originally, but rewatching, you know, because it is that good. Um, WB has some of my favorite movies of all time, you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, now, I don't, I actually don't think that's on there, but, uh, you know, if it, if it ever does go to streaming, it's definitely going to be on HBO. Um, you've got, uh, now I, you know, haven't gotten into like the DC movies and stuff like that. Uh, but it's got the original Batmans, which are better <laughs> in my opinion, Batman and Batman returns are the best Batman movies. Um, if you take away the fact that Heath Ledger was the most unreal, good Joker of all time. Uh, I don't think, Nolan's Batman series is all that great. Yeah, it's good. It's, you know, I would put it above uh, Matt Reeves, the Batman, but it's not better than Michael Keaton. It's not better than Jack Nicholson. It's not better than Danny DeVito as, uh, as Penguin. <coughs> the original, ba the original two Batman movies are phenomenal. Um, Disney plus has some stuff. You know, that's pretty good. You've got the Indiana Jones trilogy. You've got the, uh, you know, I know it's universal, but uh, I believe Back to the Future is on Disney Plus as well. Uh, you've got the Star Wars stuff. Some of the Star Wars stuff is really good. Some of it is not great at all. I didn't think Ahsoka was a very good show, you know, and, and that's probably because uh, the Star Wars animated series, The Clone Wars, is phenomenal and uh and you go from that to ahsoka you know being a real life action uh you know live action star it just doesn't have the same feel you know um but i thought the mandalorian was a very good show we'll see we'll see how it progresses as they you know they transition from uh you know pedro pascal's mandalorian to uh the new whatever the lady's name is to her new mandalorian series 
Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I did like that. Um, they've got the original Disney movies. Some of them have been edited. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you, you don't get much better than, <laughs> you don't get much better than Robin Williams as the genie in Aladdin. Uh, I, I, you know, I, now they're new, they're new Disney movies, like the live action Little Mermaid, whatever, bro. I don't have to watch it. <laughs> I don't go to see the movies in the movie theaters. I can just watch whatever streaming option I, I have. <laughs> um, but again, that's, you know, I think that's only like maybe 14 or $15 and you also get uh, ESPN plus and Hulu, you know, the ba it's, it's the base Hulu. It's not Hulu with live TV or anything like that, but, uh, you know, it, it gives you a package that gives you more value out of the, the money that you pay for, uh, for Disney plus. Uh, and so like you, you have more added value to it than you do with Netflix, which is just Netflix. And so my question that I pose to you guys is streaming headed down the TV path? Is the streaming services becoming a cable provider? Uh, and and it's hard to say because again, you don't really have bundle packages. I know, I know they say that Paramount Plus and um, I can't remember what the other one is is uh, are trying to come together with a like a bundle package and stuff like that. But I mean, it's streaming seemed like it was going to be the future and uh, now it's just as bad as cable tv was uh which is the reason everybody went to streaming in the first place <laughs> so um my question to you guys is what do you uh what do you guys think is streaming gonna be worth paying for in the future is it uh, headed down the same cable route path uh, are we all going to go back to pirating everything <laughs> Uh, in the not too distant future, because uh, you know, cable companies and streaming companies can't seem to uh, to be uh, provide anything worth providing. Um, is greedflation ever going to be uh, reined in? <laughs> you let me know. You guys let me know in the chat because uh, it's hard to say um, one way or the other. And uh, you know, it's funny because originally the uh, originally the whole argument was. Uh, well, you know, you don't get to see it on the big screen. Well, I mean, I can go out and buy a 90 inch TV, a hundred inch TV right now and put it in my living room and I can get a surround sound system that matches anything that I get in the movie theater nowadays for, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars. And, uh, you know, if you add up all the times that I was going to see movies, I'm probably at a few thousand dollars already. Uh, so it, you know, watching movies on TVs at home and, and even, even on a 27 inch screen, it's not, <coughs> it's not that bad. Excuse me. <coughs> it's not that bad if the content is good. And uh, this is what I've said about this podcast and most podcasts. Uh, as long as the content is good, the, the, the visual doesn't really matter that much. You know, people will watch a terrible looking movie if the movie is exciting to watch. So uh, I'll leave you guys with that question. Let me know in the comment section below, where do you guys think movies are headed? Where do you think uh, streaming services are going? Are they going to get better? Are they going to get worse? I want to, I generally want to know what you guys think, but that's going to wrap this one up. That was episode number five of the, uh, another gamer dad podcast. Plenty more to come along. I've got ideas kicking around in the head. So uh, be sure to uh, hit that like button, hit that sub button. Again, uh, hopefully by the time this show releases, we'll be over on Spotify, but definitely by the time episode six. So head on over, follow Big Sweet C at, uh, on Spotify if you prefer to, uh, to listen to a podcast and watch it here on YouTube, uh, which I don't blame you. So <clears throat> uh, we've got plenty of stuff coming with the live streams as well. Uh, currently right now, we've got a lot of Final Fantasy going. We just played uh, our second round of Final Fantasy III, which I'm finally starting to get into. Like it's a it's a good one, you know, a, a classic NES game uh, that uh, you know took me a little bit to kind of figure out what was going on, but uh, it seems to really be picking up now. Uh, and then uh, we're we're going through Rebirth, which is again so good, <laughs> so good. Um, so be sure to, uh, you know, check those out. Our streaming days are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That'd be 6 to 10 if you're over on the East Coast. Uh, again, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesdays will be the uh, the retro days for us for the time being Final Fantasy 3. 
Uh, and then for the time being, we're playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on uh, on the other three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, um, but we've got uh, you know we're gonna catch up to a lot of stuff. A lot of you guys have been talking about Hell Divers, <laughs> um, so we'll uh, we'll have to check that out, and uh, you know maybe we can get into some stuff that we missed last year. Speaking of game of the year, Baldur's Gate Three, maybe we can get into that as well. Uh, but I also plan on using this year to. Um, catch up to a lot of uh, our backlog. So haven't gotten a chance to play Octopath Traveler or Octopath Traveler 2. Uh, so we'll get into that. Um, I want to get back into, uh, uh, you know, we haven't, uh, we haven't really played fa uh, Fallout 3 uh, on, on this channel a whole lot. So I want to go back into that retro game. Um, and we've just got a, a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, we're looking forward to playing. So I hope you guys are looking forward to uh, to watching. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that I maybe I should play. Uh, we should get into Lies of P as well. That was a fun one. Um, but uh, be sure to, uh, again, like, sub, hit that comment button. Uh, hit that comment section with what you guys want to see. Uh, like, sub, subscribe. Uh, sub, subscribe. <laughs> Share on uh, share on your social medias uh, to help us grow as a uh, as a community. And um, if you'd like, you can follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. We also have a Discord if you want to join that as well. But uh, before I continue on rambling, that's going to do it for this one. Big Sweet C, that's me. Wishing YouTube, that's you, or Spotify, or wherever you happen to be watching this podcast. Wishing you a wonderful watching time. Uh, day, night, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is is you watching. I hope you're having a wonderful watching time. That's going to do it for this one. Sweetness, signing off. Peace.